Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of events, updates and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation and also Blender Zen app. And this week we do have a couple of things that you guys may want to take a look at. Starting off, there is a developer's blog that deals with the distribution of code. Right here you get to see Blender OSS and licenses and this is more like uh, something that I would, you know, I believe a lot of you guys should actually read about. So Blender 2.93 simply marks the second milestone or the second implementation of the LTS program and for sure this actually puts Blender on the map in terms of long-term support for tools that they've created. So we already saw the LTS for you know 2.83 and now we're seeing LTS for 2.93. So what is this about? There is actually something that happens with Blender and distribution of stuff which deals with the fact that in most cases one of the long-standing issues that you know Blender has is most of the libraries that they are working with is scattered around the internet and what if the these servers that these things are scattered around gets shut down. What happens when these things are down? And on the other hand, some of these things, what if they become old? What happens to Blender? So what is the goal? So to solve this, the folks at Blender Foundation are looking at how Blender 2.93 source code will be distributed with all of the libraries that was used for that version. So for incremental versions and LTS updates, only the main Blender source code packages will be distributed. And this is more like uh, something that they've been working on for a while now. And it's pretty interesting to see that it is now here. So in case you want to read more about this, you want to understand the whole idea about the OSS attribution, maybe you want to check it out, you want to see how these things get to work, I'm going to put a link in the description that can bring you right here where you can see it. Moving forward, Blender 2.93 release date was moved to June the 2nd. This was supposed to be coming out May the 26th, but it's very interesting to see that, you know, a day before the release date, this was actually moved. So for anyone that was thinking about, you know, why wasn't this released or something like that, this was due to last minute build bug fixes. And of course you can also come through and read the BF committers that deals with all of the conversation that led to that. So with this said, let's dive over and take a look at some of the improvements that is now here in Blender. But before we do that, okay, before we talk about the new features and new stuff that you'll be seeing in Blender 3.0, Let's go over to the download section and check out some stuff. So if you come over to the download section now, you'd also notice that the download section now comes with a beautiful looking update that deals with how the website looks like right now. And at this point, if you click on all archive builds, you can now see all the archive builds. So previously, this wasn't how you get to access some of these things, but it's quite interesting to see that it is now organized in such a way. You can also go over to the build box if this is what you're looking for. And if you're also thinking about, you know, checking out some other parts, so let's go all the way back you want to check out the patches you want to check out you know experimental you want to check out the daily stuff you can now easily access all of these directly on the builds and this looks pretty pretty nice so with this set let's dive over to blender 3.0 the alpha so with blender 3.0 the alpha opened right here there's a couple of things that are now available with blender so let's actually go in and make sure that we are seeing this the very way that it's supposed. All right, so with this open right here, there's a couple of things. The very first one which we're going to talk about is something that you can now do within the geometry node. So for example, if we open up the geometry node right now by simply clicking, going over to geometry node, clicking on the plus sign. If you hold down shift and tap A on the keyboard, you'll notice we have a brand new material section. So there's now a material assign, which is one, and also a material replace. So these are very nice. At the same time, there's a very cool stuff that is now within the curve section that deals with the mesh to curve. This is gonna be very useful for those who are into making curves. You definitely find this one useful and you can always work with it. So if we simply go over and take a look at creating material, so let's just go in and make one, two, three, four materials, make it new, make it new, and go all the way to this point. So if we select on any of them, let's play with the base color, and see what we can get so we can have one there we can also go over here make another one we can go over here and make another one and we can go over here make another one and finally we can have one here so let's just simply set this one to white so that we see what we are working with so what you can do now is you can pick the material replace and you can plug that here and you can select the initial color which you have which is the you know the color you want to replace and you can click on this button and you can replace that now this works for a lot of things so if you already assigned a material to something you can now replace that material so for example if we've already assigned let's say the material red or maybe the material green to this object we can select that material and we can 
change it. So that can also work if we already have a selection and we apply giving material to that selection. So what I mean by that is if we simply go over and double click, select one part, for example, and I switch over to purple and I select, I'll simply assign that part and let's jump all the way out. What we can do is we can now say that we would like wherever purple exists to be replaced with green. So you can see that there and you can also say wherever maybe one thing exists, replace it with something else and this would just simply work. This makes a lot of sense. And with that said, you can also choose to assign materials to given selections. So let's say there's a selection that you've saved out, you can also assign materials to that. So this is also the role of the material assigned. And this isn't the first time we're getting to see material come over to the node. The material thing has always been here. Let's simply just search that so we can type material. So if we simply get the material out here, we can load up a given material. So instead of loading this, if we say we want to load the green, we can load the green one right here and we can wire this over to this part and you can see that. So this is very nice for those who are thinking about shading directly with the geometry node. You want to have like a universal shade. This is going to be very, very useful. Now with this said, let's take a look at this new node. So probably lots of you guys may or may not have used this one before. So let's see how this one works. So how this works is pretty interesting. Right now, once you throw in the mesh curve, automatically you get to notice that we have this curve and you can even make selections. And this is where it shines for me. So if I have this object selected, so let's just have this object selected right here, go over to where we have our modifiers and throw in a subdivision surface and we would make this maybe like three, for example, click, let's make this a simple one, click and apply that, you would notice we have that. So if I also go in select and uh, let's double click to go into our edit mode. So right here within our edit mode, so let's just simply go over, take this one out, make sure that we have a selection like so. So let's switch over, all right? So make sure that we have a selection like so. So with this selection, let's actually make sure that we have a good selection. So we would hold down Alt on the keyboard, click and drag. This is if you're using the, the power select add-on, right? So once you have this selected, you can now assign this to something. So if you go all the way down here. So where is that? So if you go all the way down here, you can click on this button and assign this. So now we have this as a group one. So for click, drag, drop right here, switch and select the group, which is the points. You notice we have that. So what you can do with this now is uh, quite interesting. So with this here, we can also go over to the curves and we can say we would like, you know, to convert our curves to become meshes. And this can work in several instances. So you can create something and convert it to curves. And from curves, you can also convert these things to meshes. So we can simply pick that. Let's uh, scale this down. So let's scale that down, move this to a point, and then we can have that selection go all the way here and get the object info. And just like we talked about last week, we can wire this geometry over to this point and then select the Bezier circle and have this here. And in some very interesting cases, you might also want to throw in a transform, which you can use to transform all of this. And you can go in and throw in a value node and use the value node to also drive how these things should look. So at this point, we can go in and say, one get something like 0.01, and you can start creating some interesting things for yourself. So of course, most people would say, yeah, why not just simply use, you know, the wireframe, the former and stuff like that. But in this case, you're getting something that is totally different from what you could get with the wireframe deformer. And with this as well, you can even do some more interesting things. So let's say, for example, you want to get a selection. So for a selection, what we can do is we can simply select and mute all of this node so that we have our basic stuff. And then we will go in. So let's double click, hold on, alt, click and drag to make a selection which selects back and the front. And if you're wondering how this is possible, there is a, an add-on called the power select and that's the one we're using. So you can use this and we can have a quick selection. Now let's go over and create a group. And with this group, we're just going to go ahead and click on assign and then we'll click on these nodes one more time press m to reveal them back and we can click on select and then simply select the group and once we do that and we double click from here to jump all the way back you can now see some interesting patterns 
that we have going in so you can use this for a lot of cases and this is just one of those beautiful things that you can use the mesh to curve to create and while we talk about things that you can use the mesh to curve to create there is also some pretty nice things that you can now do right here so one of the things that you can do now if you go in and create a grease pencil so for example we have a simple monkey here let's go in and take out these ones actually let's jump all the way here if you create a simple monkey right now and you have it selected if you go over to where you have your modifiers you can now add the lens modifier so with the length modifier you can now increase the start and also the end of the length and as well you can throw in a noise and you can you know use a whole noise thing that we've talked about before and create some very interesting and lovely looking art and at the same time there is a very nice add-on that the folks at blender cloud has also made public so just in case you want to convert your grease pencil to mesh this is actually something that you can do and i'm also going to put a link in the description to all of this thing so you can go in and download this free add-on and work with it and if you're you know you're interested with something like this you can go in and check it out i'm going to put links to this where you can get it for free and this actually doesn't require you to be on the blender cloud for you to be able to get it so lots of cool stuff right here for those who are interested in things like this and while we speak about add-on there is also some very interesting updates and of course this one is just tied to a particular set of people so if you're already into you know foliage and stuff the folks at b production have just released the version 3 of their add-on and right now they're doing a 10 percent discount i'm gonna put this link in the description where you can check it out and the coupon code for this is vegetation tree there's a massive update with this one we'll probably go in and make a video about it for those who would find this one worthy and if you want to take a look at it you want to see what it looks like you can also go in and check these ones out for yourself and while we talk about things that you might want to check out the folks at polygonic are doing a giveaway right now and the giveaway actually deals with you know them hitting a thousand followers right here on their instagram and you might want to go over here check out this see how this actually works read up on the you know the criteria so you can avail yourself of getting the add-ons that they have to offer so the folks at polygonic are also the creators of botanic traffic material leak and so on and so forth links to all of this is going to be in the description so you can do well to check these things out for yourself and that's more like it for those who like to come through read up on the alembic updates which is now available here links to this is going to be in the description if you want to read up on the you know the committers that deals with why blender 2.93 has been pushed to june the second or maybe you're thinking about reading up on the blender oss and licenses links to all of this is going to be in the description so do well to check these things out and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss next video or the next update and i see you guys again with a tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace